coming to the amphibole group of minerals. So the outline of this topic it includes the introduction, general characters, what is its classification, structure, uh, orthorhombic amphiboles, monoclinic amphiboles, triclinic amphiboles, alkali amphiboles, physical properties, optical properties and occurrence. Coming to the introduction, amphiboles are the important rock forms and these amphiboles and pyroxenes they together make up about 17% of the igneous rocks and amphiboles are inosilicates these are exhibiting double chain structure so the resulting uh, structure is si 4 o 11 and these are very closely related to the amphibole group of minerals in many respects and uh, though uh, these amphiboles crystallize under uh, uh, different crystal systems like orthorhombic monoclinic and triclinics many of their physical and uh, chemical properties and also the crystallographic properties are uh, similar to one another Hydroxyl molecules are always present in the amphiboles, whereas in the pyroxene group of minerals, these hydroxyl molecules are absent. So the amphiboles are characterized by two directions of cleavages. So these are intersecting at angles of 56 and 124. And amphiboles, are, they are the silicates of magnesium, calcium, iron, aluminum, sodium and rarely potassium. So these are amphiboles are abundant in plutonic rocks which are rich in water. Coming to the general characters, so as we have discussed that inosilicates, these are, uh, they belong to inosilicates, double chain structures and they are the silicates of magnesium, iron, calcium and sodium with or without aluminium and they differ from pyroxenes in the presence of uh, OH, that means uh, one of uh, OH for every 11 oxygen atoms and they exhibit long prismatic crystals with prism angles of 120 degrees and acicular or uh, they, they exhibit acicular or uh, fibrous crystal habit so which are uh, pseudomorphic and they show perfect prismatic cleavages at 56 and 124 and uh, so this anthophyllite and ferrocidrite uh, they belongs to orthorhombic system and if you take the minerals like uh, cummingtonite, grunerite, trimolite, actinolite, hornblende, then edinite, glucophane, uh, ribakite, shermakite, paraxite, all they belong to the monoclinic system and uh, cosserite it belongs to triclinic system. Coming to the general formula, so it is represented by AX2Y5Z8O22OHF. So here uh, A stands for sodium or potassium and X stands for uh, calcium, sodium, manganese, uh, then Fe2+, plus, Fe3+, plus, Mg2+, plus, like that and uh, Y it represents manganese, iron, Mg2+, plus, Fe3+, plus, Al3+, plus, or titanium plus 4 and Z represents silicon and aluminium. Then coming to the inosilicates, in inosilicates the tetrahedra are linked in such a way uh, to produce the chains of indefinite extent. There are again uh, two uh, types of chain structures, uh, single chain and uh, double chain. The single chain stands for uh, pyroxenes. So in pyroxenes, single chain structure is seen, whereas in the amphiboles, uh, we can see the double chain structure. So in the case of the double chain structure, half of the tetrahedra, they share two corners, while the other half share three corners. So hence the resulting composition is si 4 o 11 and uh, coming to the classification and description, these are classified into three types like orthorhombic amphiboles, uh, monoclinic amphiboles and triclinic amphiboles. Uh, only one mineral that is uh, anthophyllite, it will come under the anthorhombic amphiboles, whereas uh, cosserite, uh, it belongs to triclinic amphiboles. There are so many examples of monoclinic amphiboles and alkali amphiboles as well. Coming to the monoclinic amphiboles, here uh, if you take uh, cummingtonite, it has a chemical composition of uh, magnesium iron silicate so that is hydrated uh, magnesium iron silicate and if you take grunite it has a uh, uh, hydrated uh, iron magnesium silicate if you take the trimolite trimolite it has a uh, uh, hydrated uh, calcium magnesium silicate and actinolite it has a uh, hydrated calcium magnesium iron silicate and if you take the hand blend so it is a hydrated uh, calcium magnesium iron aluminum silicate so all these uh, they belong to the monoclinic system so that's why they are known as monoclinic amphiboles. Coming to alkali amphiboles, so three minerals like arfetsonite, glucophane, ribakite, they are represented by this formula. They belongs to the alkali amphiboles. So coming to the orthorhombic amphibole, so this is known as anthophyllite. So the crystal system, it is uh, orthorhombic and uh, the physical properties, uh, it has a chemical composition like uh, magnesium iron silicate, so with uh, hydroxyl molecules and it belongs to the orthorhombic crystal system and uh, coming to the form or habit so these uh, mineral it will have an elongate on acicular crystals these are very common 
and coming to the color it has a different shades of brown and uh, the cleavage it is in perfect 110 prismatic cleavage and luster it is a uh, vitreous luster and uh, coming to the daphnity it, it is very transparent sometimes it may be sub translucent also then hardness it is about 5.5 to 6 and it has a specific gravity of 2.85 to 3.57 coming to the optical properties of anthophyllite so this is uh, optically negative and it shows uh, the angle of 2v angle is 69 to 90 degrees and uh, coming to the color it is uh, colorless sometimes shades of brown can also be seen and habit uh, so the crystals are acicular or you can say that they are elongate and prismatic so cleavage it exhibits uh, two directions of cleavage in basal section that is uh, 56 and 124 and relief is moderate to high and it alters to chlorite or talc and birefringence is uh, low to moderate and it shows second order uh, interference colors and it is the only orthorhombic amphibole so it can be easily characterized by its parallel extinction relative to the 110 cleavage then coming to the occurrence so generally this anthophyllite gen, uh, it does not occur in igneous rocks but it is a constituent of metamorphic rocks and it is found only in the metamorphic rocks during the high grade regional metamorphism of ultra basic igneous rocks and this is found in uh, amphibolites gneisses hornfels sometimes these are associated with the talc or cordierite coming to the monoclinic amphiboles so here uh, the uh, it is known as a cummingtonite grunerite series so this cummingtonite it is uh, represented by the formula that is magnesium iron silica oxygen is there and it is hydrated magnesium iron silicate so coming to grunerite it is uh, iron magnesium so same thing but uh, uh, the position of the ions is different they coming to the physical properties anthophyllites they have uh, magnesium ratio that is high magnesium ratio that magnesium is uh, greater in proportion when compared to the iron whereas in grunerite uh, they will have iron is uh, more in concentration when compared to the magnesium this is the only difference between anthophyllite and uh, grunerites so coming to the crystal system they belong to the monoclinic crystal system and color it is uh, they exhibit brownish uh, grayish brown or sometimes brown and cleavage is perfect 110 prismatic cleavage and luster is vitreous and daphnity it is uh, transparent to subtranslucent and hardness it is about 5 to 6 and uh, specific gravity is around 3.1 to 3.6 coming to night grown right uh, so coming to optical properties of uh, this mineral so uh, coming to the color it shows the colorless to pale green and uh, pleochroism iron rich coming to night is weakly pleochroic and habit uh, it exhibits that elongate to fibrous crystals and uh, relief is moderate to high and uh, sometimes it alters to uh, chloride this is the most common and birefringence is moderate and second order birefringence is colors so coming to the varieties of this so amosite or uh, montasite it is the asbestiform variety of the cummingtonite grunerite series and uh, this occurrence uh, the cummingtonite it occurs in metamorphosed basic igneous rocks which is associated with common hornblendes whereas the grunerite it occurs in metamorphosed iron rich sediments which are in association with magnetite quartz or sometimes garnet also so this uh, cummingtonite grunerite it is more common in metamorphosed igneous rocks where the members of the series they occur with horn blend and it has been found in siliceous volcanic rocks as well and this cummingtonite is optically positive while grunerite is optically negative and members of this series it can be distinguished from orthorhombic anthophyllite by the inclined extinction of the monoclinic uh, cummingtonite grunerite series and it can also be distinguished from trimolite and actinolite by the higher refractive indices and also high birefringence of the cummingtonite grunerite series coming to the trimolite trimolite it has uh, the physical properties like uh, chemical composition crystal system form and habit like this so the chemical composition it is uh, calcium magnesium silicate with uh, hydroxyl molecules and uh, it belongs to the monoclinic crystal system and uh, this have a form or habit of uh, bladed columnar and sometimes fibrous radiating also color it exhibits different colors like white gray yellow and green and streak is white luster is vitreous to silky and fracture is uneven and cleavage it shows the prismatic cleavage and uh, they intersect at angles of 56 and 124 trimolite generally it occurs exclusively in low grade metamorphic rocks and particularly so those which have a high calcium concentration such as uh, meta dolomites meta ultra basic rocks like that coming to the optical properties uh, it has a color colorless to pale green or brown and uh, sometimes uh, the habit it is about uh, elongate to fibrous crystals and relief is moderate to high 
and it has uh, all the uh, amphibole uh, type of cleavages is present in all these minerals and alteration generally it alters to chloride and it has a uh, moderate to second order interference colors and uh, it is another uh, distinguishing feature is it shows no pleochroism which distinguish it from the other amphiboles and it has a high relief and inclined extinction and it is optically negative and 2b is about uh, a little bit high it is 85 and in thin sections it is distinguished from olastronite and diapsoid by its amphibole type of cleavage and uh, the, coming to the varieties of the trimolite, uh, there is another important variety that is known as a nephrite. This is, uh, it has a very important uh, habit that is known as acicular habit. This is the asbestiform variety and another variety that is known as a mountain leather, which is a fibrous variety of the trimolite. And occurrence, uh, these uh, trimolite, it occurs uh, or it is formed during the thermal or regional metamorphism of impure dolomitic limestones and they occur in low grade metamorphic rocks. Coming to the actin light physical properties. So, its uh, composition is represented like this, calcium, magnesium, iron, silicate, so along with the hydroxyl molecules and uh, this belongs to the monoclinic crystal system and uh, it occurs in uh, bladed, columnar and fibrous forms and color is usually green and uh, streak is light green. Uh, it has a vitreous luster, sometimes silky luster may also be seen and uneven fracture and it exhibits the prismatic intersecting cleavages at 56 and 124. And hardness 5 to 6 and the specific gravity it ranges from 3.02 to 3.50. Coming to the optical properties uh, it shows the color uh, its uh, color is colorless to pale green or brown color and uh, it has the characteristic pale yellow to green pleochroism and uh, it has an habit of uh, elongate to fibrous crystals and it is optically negative with the 2V so this 2V is about 60 to 85 degrees and it has a moderate to high relief and cleavage the same type of amphibole type of cleavage is present in actin light also and it has a moderate second order interference colors generally it will alters to chloride this is common to actin light so this is a characteristic mineral of the green schist phases this is very important so this actin light may also occur in blue schist along with the glucophane epidote and albite but overall this actin light is a characteristic mineral of the green schist phases so it is green uh, that means enhanced specimen and it shows the characteristic amphibole type of cleavage and usually showing an elongated habit. And uh, another variety that is important, asbestos, it is the fibrous variety of actinolite. Coming to another uh, variety or you can say that uralite, it is an actinolite which has replaced and pseudomorphed a pyroxene in basic uh, igneous plutonic rocks and uh, coming to the occurrence of this actinolite it is formed during the thermal or regional metamorphism of impure dolomitic limestone and it occurs almost exclusively in low grade metamorphic rocks particularly in meta basalts and meta gabbros where it is commonly associated with the chloride low grade metamorphic rocks coming to the Hahnbrand physical properties so Hahnbrand this is a representative of a chemical formula or chemical composition calcium magnesium iron aluminum silicate along with the water molecules and it belongs to the monochrome crystal system coming to the form and habit it exhibits prismatic crystals and color it is about black or greenish black in color cleavage it has a perfect 110 cleavage which intersect at 124 in the basal plane and vitreous luster it's about transparent sometimes it may be opaque also hardness of 5 to 6 and specific gravity of 3.02 to 3.50 and uh, coming to the optical properties, it has a color, it exhibits a color like green or yellowish brown in color and uh, habit, it has a prismatic elongate crystals, these are very common and uh, relief moderate to high and pleochroism, this is pale green to brown, this is an important uh, characteristic color of the hornbend, so hornbend shows the pleochroism of pale green or brown and cleavage the same as in the case of other uh, amphiboles, it has amphibole type of cleavage and alteration, it commonly alters to chloride. By reference, it is variable with maximum interference colors and low and second order interference colors. So coming to the occurrence, so this hornblende, it's a primary mineral uh, in intermediate and acidic and also plutonic igneous rocks. So hornblende is an essential constituent of the amphibolite facies of the regional metamorphism. This is also important characteristic feature of this hornblende. Hornblende is a very important constituent of the amphibolite facies of the regional metamorphism and it is a common mineral in both igneous and metamorphic rocks. Whereas in igneous rocks it is found in andesites, dacites, rhyolites as well as in gabbros, diorites and granites. In metamorphic rocks it is a common constituent of metabasols that have been uh, metamorphosed to intermediate grades of regional metamorphism which are also known as amphibolites and it is also found in some ultra basic rocks. 
So in hand specimen, it is a dark brown to black in color and it shows the characteristic anthropoid cleavage. Whereas in thin sections, it shows high relief and uh, it has a characteristic green to brown and sometimes yellow pleochrism also. And uh, it uh, shows a 2B angle, it cover a wide range and it is not very useful in the distinction of the horn blend. So coming to the varieties of the horn blend, there are uh, different varieties like Edenite. This is iron bearing variety. Edenite is an iron bearing variety of the horn blend. And uh, Dash Kesasite is a chlorine bearing variety. And uh, Pargasite is another iron bearing variety. Coming to the basaltic horn blend. So this basaltic horn blend is also known as Lamprobolite or Oxy horn blend. So this is uh, known in other, another name as a basaltic horn blend is also no, known as a Lamprobolite or Oxy horn blend. So this is a calcium, sodium, titanium horn blend and it has a, a high iron uh, Fe plus 3 to Fe 2 plus ratio and low hydroxyl molecules and it differs from the ordinary horn blend in higher refractive index, higher birefringence, smaller extinction angle and dark brown in color. So this basaltic horn blend it is different, uh, differentiated from the ordinary horn blend in higher refractive index, higher birefringence, smaller extension angle and dark brown in color. And it commonly occurs in volcanic rocks and it is a general, uh, the color it is dark brown to reddish brown. And varieties of the horn blend uh, that results from the oxidation during the crystallization of the basalts, andesites, dacites and rhyolites. It usually it has a dark reaction ring. It consists of an opaque oxide and it is characteristically pleochroic in yellow to brown, sometimes reddish brown in color also. So okay, varieties of the basaltic horn blend. So anthophyllite, this is also known as amosite, fibrous, this is known as a fibrous variety and jedrite also. Alkali amphiboles, uh, so these minerals like arfetsonite, glucophane and ribakite are known as amphiboles, uh, alkali amphiboles because uh, alkalis are present in this uh, chemical composition like uh, sodium is present. So these are the, the chemical compositions are represented like this sodium magnesium aluminum silicate with along with hydrous molecules and the glucophane it is a sodium magnesium aluminum silicate. So uh, the stacking of the number of the atoms is different like uh, magnesium here Mg4 is there here Mg3 is there like that uh, there is a small differentiation between the atomic arrangement. Coming to the arfetsonite, arfetsonite is uh, the chemical composition is uh, like this and uh, this occurs most commonly in para-alkaline volcanic rocks and alkaline plutonic igneous rocks where it typically occurs with the sodic pyroxene known as agerine and it is blue green to yellow green pleochrism and it is distinguishing from other amphiboles. So it has a varieties like uh, cataphorite and uh, barkevikite. So here coming to the overall the physical properties like uh, they belong to crystal system monoclinic and form and habit glucophane usually occurs as prismatic sometimes fibrous sometimes massive or granular and uh, ribocite it occurs as a subhedral prismatic coming to the color uh, glucophane is a blue black or gray whereas ribocite is a dark bluish green or black and cleavage they exhibit a perfect 110 prismatic in both uh, glucophane and ribocite and they have the vitreous luster and uh, diaphanity is a transparent and hardness, uh, it is 6 in the case of glucophane, whereas a 5 in the case of ribocite. And specific gravity, it is about 3.02 in glucophane and uh, 3.4 in ribocite. Coming to the optical properties, so they uh, here the 2V angle is about uh, 0 to 50 degrees and uh, that is another uh, um, cross site. Uh, it is an intermediate between the glucophane and ribocite. It occurs in which the optic axial plane is perpendicular to 0, 1, 0. And the color coming to the color, uh, glucophane is a pale colored or it is colorless sometimes. And whereas the ribocite is a strongly colored in blue or green. And both uh, the glucophane and ribocite are pleochroic and uh, relief uh, they exhibit moderate to high relief. And alteration, uh, it is very rare in glucophane but ribocite generally alters to crocidolite. So crocidolite it is a fibrous asbestos form mineral. And uh, birefringence is low to moderate and uh, twinning they exhibit a simple or repeated twinnings. Coming to the varieties, that is a, that is a crocidolite, it is a blue asbestos, it is a fibrous asbestos form variety of ribocite. And another variety that is known as a cat's eye or tiger's eye, it is a golden yellowish brown variety. And crossite, it is a variety intermediate between glucophane and ribocite. Coming to the occurrence, uh, glucophane is a common mineral in uh, blue schist phases. And blue schists are commonly found in association with ophiolites. And metamorphic rocks that result from low temperature, high pressure metamorphism along uh, ancient subduction zones and ribocite it is found in alkali granite, cyanites and paralkaline rhyolites 
and glucophen is easily distinguished from other amphiboles by its uh, characteristic uh, blue lavender pleochroism and glucophen is a uh, length slow whereas uh, ribocyte is length fast coming to the asbestos so asbestos is a fibrous forms of amphibole and the fibers are very long thin flexible and uh, they can be easily separated by the fingers the coming to the color of the asbestos generally it is white greenish or brownish and uh, varieties different varieties of asbestos like amianthus mountain cork mountain leather and mountain wood all these are the varieties of the asbestos and uh, coming to the commercial asbestos there are different varieties of commercial asbestos like chrysotile it is also known as a fibrous serpentine and it has this chemical composition so uh, hydrous magnesium silicate and actinolite this is also known as a asbestos proper and it has the composition of calcium magnesium iron silicate along with uh, fluorine and hydroxyl molecules and another uh, uh, commercial asbestos it is known as amosite it is uh, known as a fibrous anthophyllite and uh, its formula is represented like this and uh, crocidolite it is a fibrous ribocyte so and its composition is sodium iron silicate along with the water molecules asbestos commercially occurs in three forms so these are known as a uh, cross fiber slip fiber and mass fiber so cross fiber means when the fibers are at right angles to the vein walls they are known as a cross fiber and slip fiber means when the fibers are parallel with the walls and are formed along the planes of the movement and mass fiber means when the fibers occur as anthophyllite types uh, the inhalation of the small quantities of asbestos dust in the form of uh, minute needle like fibers it causes lung diseases known as uh, pneumoconiosis coming to the differences between the pyroxenes and amphiboles so these have uh, uh, coming to the property suppose if you take the form or habit of a pyroxenes it is a short prismatic and sometimes it is complex transfer sections are usually four sided or eight sided whereas uh, amphiboles they have long prismatic habit and uh, uh, they are very simple transfer sections are usually six sided coming to the cleavage angles of pyroxenes 87 and uh, 93 sometimes they exhibit pseudo tetragonal habit so here uh, the amphiboles uh, cleavage angles are 56 and 124 and they exhibit pseudo hexagonal uh, habit and uh, structure so this uh, pyroxenes are single chain structures they are also known as inosilicates uh, they exhibit single chain structure that is SiO3 and amphiboles uh, they are uh, inosilicates double chain structure SiO4 O11 and specific gravity of the pyroxenes uh, is little bit higher and uh, amphiboles is uh, little bit lower when compared to the pyroxenes and extinction angle uh, they exhibit the maximum extinction angle of 48 degrees whereas the amphiboles they exhibit about 20 degrees and uh, so these are biaxial uh, positive and they exhibit the 2v angle 50 to 60 degrees and uh, these amphiboles are biaxial negative the 2v is greater than 70 and coming to the twins uh, twinning uh, twins are rare with the reentrant angle in pyroxenes whereas uh, twins are common with no reentrant angles in amphiboles coming to the exolution lamellae so these are very common in uh, ortho uh, that is uh, opx and cpx that is uh, clinoperoxin and orthoperoxin from basic igneous rocks whereas uh, this uh, exolution lamellae these are very rare or not present in amphiboles and coming to the pleochroism so most of the pyroxen group of minerals are non pleochroic except for sodium or iron bearing varieties and these amphiboles are usually pleochroic see you in the next video